Shalom. Welcome to our daily class in Rabbi Nachman on Patreon. We are holding in the middle of Torah Pei Vav, 86. And we had this idea of human GPS, which sounds pretty cool, right? But what is it? It's when we're guided by an inner level of our soul that we don't even know exists most of the time. And we've learned that you reveal that level of your soul by several things. One is being true. Two is giving charity on Shabbat. Tzedek lefanav yalach. That righteousness will go before the person. It literally drives a person into the right direction in life. Okay, and we learned that, of course, we need to have a pure heart to be able to get to that level, and to get to that level, we have to have truth. Well, what does the <laughs> Rebbe, Nachman, tells us? is a statement that, you know, when you hear it, you're like, what? Uh, even the unlearned are afraid to lie on Shabbat. Interesting. Now, of course, this was said a long time ago, and what the unlearned were then and what they are today is not our... Uh, our comparison. However, it does teach us something that Shabbat introduces a power of truthfulness that even the person who doesn't even know the laws will keep the laws. That sounds like a, a good thing. That a person who is unlearned, who doesn't know the laws, will keep the laws, he will not lie. On Shabbat, the light of truthfulness comes into the person on Shabbat. And whereas during the weekday, the person might very, very well uh, change his words a little bit, uh, find a new version of the truth if it suits him. Where on, on Shabbat, something happens. Something is introduced in a certain per, in a person's being that he just wants to be truthful and is afraid of not being truthful. And he tells us this is the idea of the support of truth, that truth is called the third leg of, that carries a person forward into, into life. But we still need to bless all the three festivals, which we learned last time, are like the three legs that hold up the Jewish year. And so when by being truthful, we, we give power to the festival. It gives them power in order that we can go well and go straight. By this level of charity that is done on Shabbat, we release this power. Shabbat, right? So either you give a person Shabbat by giving him money for Shabbat or you give him a place for Shabbat on his table and then these two types of tzedakah we talked about it last time also on the weekday on Shabbat are engaged. And this was said was the idea of the Shemesh Tzedakah, that the sun is an actual act of charity of God for us. And then the light of the future is the second level, the light of Shabbat, of, of Tzedakah on Shabbat, And this is the idea of the renewal of the sun that will happen in the future. This is a promise of the sages thousands of years ago. When they make a promise, we don't call it a prophecy. We call it Ruach HaKodesh because they see something's going to come. But it's not printed in the books of prophecy. It's printed in the Talmud as the statements of the sages. We understand that they were on the level, that their speech is holy, and it carries a promise that we can feel good about. Now, this renewal of the sun that's going to happen in the future, it's going to be like Ka'or Shivatamim, like the light of the seven days. And we also just established that it's not just a physical light, it's the light of the shining of God's presence, the light of truth, where there is no falsehood. They say in heaven, you know, there, you can't lie because God's presence is everywhere and it's totally apparent to every person. There's no hiddenness to cause us the choice between truth and falsehoods. So this idea of the sun shining brighter means that the, just like the sun is like this charity of Shabbat, well, the, the sun in the future will be like this charity that releases the future world, he says. 
And this future world is static The future world is where the presence of Hashem will be on, on earth like it is in heaven. You hear this? <laughs> it's not it's not some fairy tale, it's not some fantastic uh, sci-fi movie. It's simply a revelation of truth. That the revelation of truth that is in heaven where no one can lie, because God is still invisible and eternal in, in heaven. Now, there is a presence that you feel, but it's not a presence necessarily that you're still going to be able to see with your physical eye, like a shining light off, like you see behind me all these chandeliers. Now, of course, people do have uh, experience when they leave their bodies of seeing a brilliant light, but that is only a symbolic step along the journey of the soul to its place. Once you get to your place in heaven, it's still, uh, you, you know that God is present, but it's not like he's there, you know, saying, huh, good morning, guys, how you doing? Welcome to heaven. We still have to know, but it's a revealed knowledge, whereas here it's all hidden. And so when that level up there is brought down here, that's what the Jew has been praying for from the beginning. This is the level of Adam and Eve before the sin, before the fall, the fall into materialism. The fall when the molecules got so dense we had a body that needs air and earth and water and fire, etc. So that's going to be revealed in the future. This is the light of the seven days that's revealed in the future as the renewal of the sun, the renewal of, of the presence. Lola Tzorko, and we, we see here, Rashi tells us, when the sun shined, it's signed for Jacob, it's signed for his healing and for his derech, his way. Okay? And therefore, when we do Shabbat, Tzedakah, we illuminate this power, and the light of the sun is like the light of the seven days. And this gives power to all the festivals. See, the festival is an interesting thing. People think, festival, well, I can do it or not do it. I can keep part of it or not all of it. You know, but we don't understand what the festival is, is the, in, the induction of a new light into the universe. Each time, every festival throughout the Jewish calendar, every year for 5,784 years, there's new lights coming in creation all the time. And what Judaism wants to do is help us receive them and grasp them and have a vessel to hold them because that makes us more godlike. To hold God's light, to be able to be one with that light and hold it in your heart <laughs> is to be like God. And now you can see why people can make that mistake and not want to let go. When they lose God's light, they still act like they have it or you know, they, create, they get the power to do miracles and then they fool people anyways because they're not really with the program. The program is to reveal God's presence. It's not to try to replace God. So that's exactly what the, the evil angel did in the beginning of creation. That's why he got kicked out of God and that's why he became the historical universal prosecutor of humanity. All right, so that, that's why these, these, these powers of the festivals need to be strengthened by us. Hashem owes la moitin. God gives us boldness Hashem noten lanu shalom and the boldness is what leads to peace so this is really shayach to what we're in, where we are now this time in history this idea that we need to be bold to get real peace because our enemies are just laughing at us we, year after year you know missile after missile and peace talk after peace talk and ceasefire after ceasefire how long does it go on how long does this need to happen why does it need to keep happening? Because apparently we're not bold enough to get the true peace. And these small steps that we learned also another idea in this Torah, that when you take small steps on Shabbat, that's the pace of Shabbat. It's slower. It's more relaxed. It's more contemplative. So that's the idea of taking short steps. And then, so Adim, this idea of doing the three meals on Shabbat, the three times you make the blessing. This is also <clears throat> the idea of truth, that when you have a festival meal, a Shabbat meal, you're connecting to a higher level. You're not the food itself, but the spark of God in the food, which is a spark of truth. 
which is the same idea of the, the, the unlearned person who's still not going to lie on Shabbat because he's getting that spark of truth. Through what? Through eating and blessing on the food. And that gives the person the power to bless them. Three festivals what gives the person the power to go forward with his own truth into his own life. See, it's one thing to sit at your table on a festival and be happy and make blessings and sing songs and all that stuff. But it's another thing to go out into the real business world and be truthful there. It's another level altogether. And this is the going, the path of truth, which becomes Sidka, Tam Tzatzir, Ka'or, Shivat Yamim. And now we see another connection, is that you're the righteousness of the righteous in the future world will shine like the seven days of creation. That there is a point in this revelation of this redemptive period we're in where a person's righteousness will shine out of him like it was in the beginning of time. And it, those are the seven days of creation. And those were powerful times because humanity hadn't created all the blocks and the filters and the clipot, as they're called, that block God's light. She attends to cup, the Shabbat, and then by giving the light, the, the charity on Shabbat, we bring that light from the, that time into this time. Because time, well, time is above time. <laughs> does that make sense? Well, it does. Because, you see, time is just a construct in the mind that we measure our everyday physical lives. But when you understand that time is really not bound by the physical, and it's a concept to help order and structure the physical realm. But in our hearts, how old do you feel? Well, it depends how you get up in the morning. You know, some mornings I get up and I feel uh, about 400. And other mornings I get up, I feel 27, you know. So I'll go figure it out. Because time is relative. While you're eight, it's come, right? That light that is shining from the seven days, from giving this charity of Shabbat, this is the idea of the Shemesh Atidad Etchadesh Ko'or Shivat Yamim. This is connected to the idea of the revealing the light of the seven days in the future. Which, as I added to this discussion, is what we're looking for. Because we want to see Hashem. We want to see Hashem. We want to know what God wants from us. And when you know every step you're taking is an expression of His will, how can you fail? You can't. So you have a success in front of us that is astounding and, and, and adds to the glory of this presence. And this is really why we suffer now is because we're missing the glory. We're missing the light, the guidance, the knowledge, the faith that what we're doing is what we have to do. And it's the right thing to do. And this is a big thing if you're a leader and you're facing things like sending young men into war. What bigger decision can a, a leader make? And so when we criticize leaders, we got to remember where they're sitting and understand how difficult that is. And when we understand that, we can appreciate the decisions that must be made that hopefully will reveal the truth. And that's what the Jewish people are here to do. We're not here to destroy. We're not here to kill. We're not here to make people homeless. We're here to establish justice. So this is a place that God can dwell in. Because if there's no justice on earth, God's not going to dwell here. God bless you all. Bruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen, amen. Blessed is God forever and ever. We finished Torah 86. Tomorrow we have a new Torah, 87. Titen emet Yaakov chesed l'Avram. Give truth to Jacob and kindness to Abraham. So this is another discussion. We'll pick up tomorrow. Have a great day.